Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green. I'm the manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbley Wombly's currently taking on Mansfield Town. Mansfield Town, which sounds like a fictional place. It's the field where all the men are. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, lots of guys from the team excited to play Mansfield today. As you can see, we're still atop the, uh, the standings despite a recent dip in form. Uh, just ahead of Portsmouth, another team, Meredith, owned by its supporters. Two teams owned by their supporters at the top of League Two here in fictional FIFA land. Real FIFA, I mean real life uh, soccer, somewhat less uh, uh, idealistic. Anyway, as you can see, we've got Frankenstein. He's a doctor, not a monster. He's also our leading assister of the ball. I apologize for just burping. Okay, today's topic comes from Mike Ward, who donated to the Project for Awesome, and says it would be interesting to hear John discuss... The concept of fiscal responsibility in terms of how governments work, it seems like during every election cycle there's a lot of talk about either raising or lowering taxes, but not much discussion of why taxes need to be there in the first place. All right, so this is a really big and interesting question, right? Because the question at its heart is, uh, what are governments supposed to do? <coughs> That's the conversation we should be having during this election cycle. Unfortunately, we're not really having it, but what are governments supposed to do? And uh, how are we going to together pay for the things that they're supposed to do? They have a slightly overweight, gray-haired, 40-year-old goalkeeper, Meredith. If I can't win this game, what can I win? Um, I'm essentially, Mansfield Town essentially starting actual John Green at goalkeeper. Um, that man has about my build, and pretty soon I will have his hair. My hair. Meredith, I don't know if you've noticed it. You've been polite in not mentioning it. My hair, grayer by the day. I'm starting to get comments in uh, Vlogbrothers videos that are not particularly friendly. Oh, that's a good, that's good. That's good stuff. Oh, and he had to make a desperate save near post. All right. So um, what should governments do? There are things that governments, um, that like over the years, we've noticed that... I, it's better if governments do them than if private enterprise does them. One of these things is like uh, education, for instance. Very few people think that education should be uh, entirely outsourced to the private sector because, um, you know, people who don't uh, have high incomes still... Oh! Oh, wow! He was wide open! There was a ton of space and a 40-year-old goalkeeper! But T.S. Eliot, just too good of a poet, not a good enough header of the ball. Um, so... Uh, like, like, uh, for instance, we education, because uh, we have found that, uh, you know, having a well-educated population is good for the social order. It's good for the economy in the long run. And so we invest uh, public money into the education of people, even if those people uh, come from poverty and couldn't pay for e education themselves, uh, because we found that 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 works. Uh, another example of things that uh, governments do that are pretty popular and considered pretty effective, roads. Um, we build roads so that we can have good uh, sort of communal infrastructure, uh, and the, we have found over, the, over the, the millennia that governments are better at this than uh, individual private collectives. Um, but there are other things that governments do that are, that are sort of less clearly um, good news. Uh, or less clearly uh, something that government should be involved in. For instance, healthcare. Now, uh, almost every country in the world, pay, well, in fact, every country in the world uh, spends less of its GDP on healthcare than the United States does as a percentage of GDP. Um, uh, but a lot of our spending is private spending because a lot of our uh, healthcare system is uh, privately funded. So people either have uh, they have private insurance, or else there are things that their insurance doesn't cover. Um, we have a very inefficient healthcare system. We know that. Uh, we know that we don't get good healthcare outcomes. Uh, like we, we we both spend too much money and don't get good healthcare outcomes, which means that we're not getting you know either benefit. Um, but people disagree over how best to address that problem. Should we, for instance, uh, encourage private enterprise to work better? Oh, come on! There's no way I would have been knocked off the ball in that situation. Riggsy is too tough. He's too big and tough. Look at his big, strong legs. Hold on, I just got a text message. Oh, it's from Riggsy. Hey, Riggsy. How's it going, buddy? It's fun to be in Mansfield, huh? All right. So, um, yeah, so we don't, we don't agree about what, what, like what, what role the government should have in healthcare spending. This is a great opportunity. Oh. Um, so we still haven't. 
So we don't agree on that. We also don't necessarily agree on how exactly to fund uh, the things that we think the government should do. So these are two separate disagreements. There's the disagreement about what the government should do, and then there's the disagreement of, of how to pay for what the government should do. Um, you know, like one way to do it is through, for instance, property taxes, which is essentially a tax on a ver very particular kind of wealth. So if you own... Uh, a fancy house or any kind of house, you have to pay a percentage of your in, of, of your of that house's value um, in taxes every year. That's one way of uh, of collecting taxes. Another way is a consumption tax, which is very popular in Europe. Um, and like there's you know called it's the VAT ta VAT. Well, I guess not the VAT tax. It's like ATM machine where it's an automatic teller machine machine. Every time I say ATM machine, somebody in comments is always like, it's redundant, it's not ATM machine, it's AT machine or ATM. Sorry. Oh, we've got great defense. We're just stubborn in defense, but we like to pass out of the back. It's controversial, but that's how we do it. Is that halftime? No. No, it's not. Okay. Um, there was apparently a foul. Now we're going to pass the ball and just continue as we were previously continuing. Almost as if the referee had played the advantage he should have played. No! Oh, it's a disaster! I made a horrible mistake in defense! Oh, no! I'm so bad at this game! Gah! Right, so there's the VAT, which is like a, uh, basically a tax on all... Oh, God! Thank God we have Shay. Shay LaBeouf! Just do it! It's basically a tax on all forms of consumption. But we have lots of consumption taxes in the United States, too. It's just that they're, like, uh, weird and state-by-state... Uh, or even city by city instead of uh, instead of national. Uh, so, like, here in Indianapolis, I think we pay, like, 8% uh, sales tax. So if you buy a $1,000 car, you also pay, I'm really bad at math, but I think that's $80 in, um, uh, in sales tax. And if, you, if it's a $10,000 car, you pay $800 in sales tax, etc. Um, so that's another way. And then there's income tax, which is basically tax on uh, income. You also, you also have a different kind of tax in the United States um, and in a lot of countries, which is tax on investment income or so-called capital gains. So if I were to, for instance, sell this YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Hank Games for, I don't know, what do you think it's worth, Meredith? $100 million? So if I sold Hank Games for $100 million, which I think... I'd probably sell it for $100 million, realistically. Um, I would have to pay taxes on that $100 million. But interestingly, it would not be taxed as income. It would be taxed as capital gains um, because I built this business, Hank Games, and then sold it. Um, and somehow in that process, I, you know, incur I, I created jobs and did other things that uh, economists want to incentivize. So I would be taxed at the lower capital gains tax rate which I think is 20% uh, up to half a million dollars and or 15% up to half a million dollars and 20% 20, 20 after that. And maybe it goes up 25% at some point, but it's lower than income tax. Um, this is, this is the, what you sometimes hear uh, politicians talking about uh, capital gains tax because many uh, hedge fund managers and other people who work in finance uh, sort of use this as a loophole to count a lot of their income uh, as uh, capital gains, um, which means, which is why, for instance, like uh, uh, Mitt Romney, who was the presidential nominee for the Republican Party in 2012, was taxed at an extremely low rate um, for most of his career because he was working for hedge funds and in banking. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, we can have, we have all these different ways of taxing people, um, and there's widespread disagreement about what is the best way. And what are the appropriate rates of taxation? Um, there's also, it must be said, disagreement about whether or not governments uh, need to... I was just fouled! That was not polite. Whether or not governments need to so, uh, have so-called balanced budgets. Whether or not the amount of money a government makes each year um, should be equal to the amount of money that it takes in in taxes. Um, I am not... I am a fan of, of balanced budgets in the, uh, in the long run. I am not a fan of balanced budgets in the short run. Um, I, I don't think that, that governments need to balance their budgets every year, just as indeed big companies don't, um, because there are some years in which you need to, you know, make investments or years in which um, uh, you need to, like, insulate against, uh, against what you think will be a temporary dip in sales or all kinds of things. So, for instance, our company uh, does not uh, make money every year, but it makes money 
you know, in the longish run. That's a great ball. Finish. Oh, God, that 40-year-old goalkeeper is a genius. Frickburger. I need to bring in a second player. I hit LT. There you go. I'm going to pass it to you. You're going to go out this way. You're going to pass it to that guy. He's going to pass it to him. He's going to pass it to him. And you're going to shoot. Oh, everything was beautiful except for the finish. Just like life. All right, let's make some substitutions. These guys. The Z's, you're out. Taylor, you're in. Elliot, you're out. Green, you're in. Bowman, never like the cut of your jib, sir. I'm bringing on noted American big bird impersonator other John Green. Oh, that was just such a great opportunity. Okay, making three substitutions all at once in the 70th minute, just like the professionals do. Uh, Mansfield Town also making a, a substitution, bringing off their green. He's almost a ginger, but I think he's yellow-haired. Um, no respect for yellow-haired people. Uh, yeah, so, um, right. So I think that, like, you need some flexibility. The problem is that a lot of, a lot of governments, because, uh, you know, you, wanna, you want um, people to vote for you, a lot of governments and democratically uh, run countries you know, end up uh, having pretty consistent budget deficits over time because, uh, you know, lower taxes and higher, um, higher government benefits, uh, like, make people like you better. Um, but that isn't a sustainable solution, obviously. But, you know, then again, if you can, if your debt is extremely inexpensive, as the U.S.'s debt currently is, I mean, um, we spend less to service our debt now than we did 10 years ago or 20 years ago or 30 years ago, like less of our GDP. I mean, if, if your debt is really inexpensive, um, I don't think it's a, you know, it's not a, it's not a huge issue because you can ostensibly kind of uh, grow the economy faster than your debt grows. If at some point debt got expensive in the United States, it would be a big, 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 big problem. But um, it would only be a big problem for new debt. It wouldn't be a big problem for the debt that we currently have. I am not one of these people who thinks that the current rate of U.S. debt is exceptionally high. They have a second green to bring on? Oh, my gosh. Mansfield Town. It's worrisome. I didn't know they had another green. Well, it's still a standard swoodly pooper nil-nil draw at the moment. But we've got Bigfoot on the case. Get, get it, Big Bird. Oh, man. He just has not had a good season. There's no two ways about it. Oh. That was a passing opportunity that, that went awry. Yeah, so um, basically, I think that governments have to be fiscally responsible, but I also think that we as a citizenship have to be extremely careful in listening, in looking at the budgets and uh, that, that people are proposing and listening. Like, for example, I think that both the, the sort of like hardest core um, or the the most... I guess, I don't want to say the most radical, but the, the least conventional budgets, um, budget proposals are those put forth by Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. To me, uh, neither of those uh, budgets add up particularly well. And I'm, I, you know, I know that saying that in the 90th minute of a Wimbly Wombly's game is going to be controversial. But, um, you know, I think that we've just got to be careful to make sure that, um, like, the growth projections are realistic because both Trump and Sanders' budgets depend on, like, 5 to 6% annual GDP growth for the U.S., which I just don't think is realistic for as mature an economy as we have. And that is the end of my dubious economic analysis while playing FIFA. Uh, bear in mind that I am not an expert or an economist, and that, in fact, uh, I was a C student in high school. All right. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry I didn't score. Bye. Best wishes.